worshipradio.faith. Or follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Worship Radio INT. This is the future. Well, good afternoon, Wealth Builders, Wealth Builders audience. This is your host, Dr. Beverly Jordan. So glad to be back 2020, the year of the double-double and so much more. Double blessings, double favor, double restoration, double healing, double honor, double doors. I'm telling you, this is the year of the greater. You already know that. I just come to confirm what you know. Well, I am, as I said, excited about what God is doing in this new season, this new era, and this new decade. And I don't say it as a cliche because it's all of the above. It is a new era, it is a new decade, and it is a new season. Amen? All right. Well, again, I am your host, Dr. Beverly Jordan, Wealth Builders. Now, I have a wonderful prophetic word that I want to share with you that the Lord gave me, and I know this is by no means uh, the whole counsel of God for what he wants to do for us in 2020 and beyond, because the word of God says what? That we know in part and we prophesy in part. But before I get to the prophetic word, I want to just make a few announcements. One of them is... My apostolic father, Apostle Kenneth D. Hogan, will be on uh, the Worship Network tomorrow. Worship International Radio Network. This very same network tomorrow at 11 a.m. Interviewed by none other than your gracious, seasoned host, Linda Hunt. Elder Linda Hunt will be interviewing him and uh, that's your marketplace connection person, awesome woman of God. She is part of the reason why I am sitting here. She interviewed me, uh, was it back in uh, November? And with that, the producer, Prophet Blaine, says, hey, it's time to get you on the radio worship network, Radio International. So here I am. But I wanted to make that announcement, so please tune in. All of you, at 11 a.m. tomorrow, you don't want to miss that. He's a powerful man of God, and I don't want to spoil it. I'm going to let Linda do the the announcements and, and all of the advertisement. I just want to encourage you to tune in and hear from heaven on tomorrow as the man of God is interviewed. Secondly, I will be ministering um, at a new wine service in Roseville on next Sunday at 3.30, Pastor Clark um, is uh, the pastor and founder. And uh, it's in Roseville at 3.30, New Wine Service. So if you want to know more information about that, I would love to share that information with you. So feel free to give me a call or inbox me or even ask me on Facebook because the flyer is already out there on Facebook. And uh, I would love to have you come out and support Pastor Clark. She is, a, she is a new pastor with a new ministry. And so we want to do what we can to support her and encourage her and her people in the work of the Lord. And then the last announcement is, that's right, international travel. Women of the Bible. There is a conference, and I don't know that we'll call it a conference, but Women of the Bible, in July we will be traveling to Israel and and ministering in Israel, group of women, and we will be visiting some of the sites where women uh, have stood, where women resided, where women ministered, uh, the place where Esther was, place where Mary was, and so forth, and I'm not doing it justice in giving the advertisement. So I would love to have you contact me directly. The trip is July 13th through the 21st, 2020, 2020. And uh, I can tell you all about the cost. I can tell you this, $300 a down payment is due immediately and your last payment would be due in June. So you have time to make the installment payments. 
I have so much more to share with you. I'm going to be doing a conference call about this trip of a lifetime. Don't want you to miss out. Let's plan to collaborate and experience the greater of God and walk um, on the ground, the sacred ground, historical ground of some of our biblical favorites as it relates to women. This is a women's trip, but men, you are invited. So women, let's decide we're doing a new thing because we know that God is raising up his women and his daughter, daughters in this hour and in this season. All right, so join me. Your friend, your minister, your servant, Dr. Beverly Jordan in Israel. Love to talk more with you about it. More about it with you. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so call me, 248-667-1456. 248-667-1456. Now, I'm going to move on to the prophetic word for 2020 and beyond. Where, as I sat before the Lord and I asked the Lord, what are you saying for and to your people in this hour? And I heard this so clearly. For 2020, I heard, like a judge pronouncing sentence in a courtroom, I heard the Lord say, I am going to throw the book at them. And then immediately I began to see these scriptures and they began to flood my heart. I saw Psalms 126, those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And then I saw Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. And let me just elaborate on each of them. I'm going to come back and elaborate on each of them. And then I saw and heard Isaiah 61, 7. For your shame, you shall receive double. And then I saw Luke 4, 18 and 19. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to bring de deliverance to the captives. Now we know that all of these passages I've quoted just a portion of the scriptures, you go back in your time of study and, and expound on it and get the revelation. What the revelation the Spirit of the Lord gave me for these passages is that the saints have been in such a place, hard places, some for a few years, some for many years, and we have been waiting for our breakthrough. We've been waiting for the manifestation of the promise. We've been waiting for the fulfillment of the prophetic word, the utterances, the preach word, and we've been waiting for the manifestation of that which we've decreed and declared. But the Lord says now is the time where we have sold, we have sold, we have sold, sold in tears, sold in finances, sold in time, sold in humility, sold in sacrifice. Now, now is the time of joy. There's going to be such a breakthrough in in finances, in healing, in marriage, in health, and in, in, in business and in ministry, just like popcorn. Um, one blessing after another, as Amos uh, 9 talks about. On the heels, before one blessing, before you can receive the fullness of that blessing, here comes another, and then here comes another. But we have to agree with heaven and fix our hearts and believe God for the greater. Amen. And then the next thing, the next passage, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth all my iniquities. All my iniquities have been forgiven. I've asked, and he's forgiven them. This is the hour you're going to have to believe that if you've asked, and you've asked with earnest, sincere, fervent, God felt good. Uh, sorrow, godly sorrow, and, and, and you've repented, and you've asked the Lord to forgive you, know that you have been forgiven. And when we're forgiven, our sins are separated as far as, the, far, as far as the north is from the east, or east is from the west, excuse me. The east is from the west. And I just sense I need to stop. I feel opposition in the realm of the spirit. 
I feel the spirit of distraction and the spirit of, of stuttering and, and not having clear thought as to releasing the word of the Lord. So I'm going to stop right now. I'm not a person caught up in form or fashion. I really work to be moved by the spirit. So Father God, I thank you. Thank you for your word. I thank you that your word has gone out. It cannot, it will not return unto you void. So the prophetic utterance, O God, of that which you have given me to release unto your people, Father God, I decree and declare there shall be no hindrance. There shall be no delay. There shall be no stammering of confusion and double talking and blockage of the release in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, anoint me afresh. Anoint my mind afresh. Anoint my ears and my heart and my tongue afresh. Anoint the atmosphere afresh. I release the angels of the Lord to go before me even now. Make every crooked place straight in this atmosphere and in the atmosphere of the airways. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind every distraction, every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus that would even cause the hearers not to hear the word of the Lord that is going forth in the name of Jesus that the spirit of truth have declared for his people in 2020 in the name of Jesus. Father God, I submit to you. I surrender to you, O oh God. All that I am, O oh God, that you, Father God, the spirit of truth, the spirit of might, the spirit of power would have your way, O oh God, in the studio, in the realm of the spirit, O oh God. Thank you, Father God, for clear thought. Thank you, Father God, for precision. And that which you need to say through your servant, the prophet, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bind every spirit of jealousy, every spirit of distraction, every spirit of haughtiness, every spirit of of slothfulness in the name of Jesus in every spirit of delay now run by the spirit of the living God with this word that I'm releasing by the power of God I decree that it is hitting the bullseye in the name of Jesus and it is so and it is so in Jesus name amen amen and amen Woo! I feel a release Hallelujah to the King of glory. Now, let's continue. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of Truth. Amen. Amen. And just for the record, I don't always pray before I open up. Sometimes I believe the Lord just gives me a segue to flow and to go because you pray at night, you pray over the word, you pray in the morning, you pray as you're driving. So I don't always, as a matter of routine, open up and just start praying. But when I feel there's an urgency or when I feel there's a necessity or when I feel there's a timing to pray before I, I share or before I minister or before I counsel, I always do it or before I meet or before I lead, I do that. So I just want to share with you that I'm not a person of religious routine, but if the Lord by his spirit of wisdom says pray, or I feel the opposition or the pushback like I felt today, then I pray. Amen? Amen. Hope you do the same. So this is the time where God is healing our diseases. Isaiah 67, we've all been through some shame and some humbling experiences. Luke 4, 18 through 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. There's a fresh anointing coming to do the work of the Lord, to bring healing to the sick, to break, to heal the brokenhearted, and to bring cap, uh, deliverance to the captives. This is a time where we shall reap. <laughs> that was the other thing that I saw. I saw mm, 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 the saints of God. This is a time where we shall reap where we have not sown. And I didn't see that scripture when I heard the Lord say that. And I saw what I saw was it was the saints were as if they were stepping up to a lever, almost like a, a slot machine. And I'm not advising or counseling or encouraging anyone to go to the casino. But. I stepped up, I saw someone stepping up to the slot machine and it was representative of the body. And when they stepped up to this machine and they pulled this lever, 
Oh my God, the release, the gold, the gold, the gold, the gold, the gold. It was just coins and coins and coins and coins and coins representing wealth. And, and this is the scripture that the Lord gave me. It wasn't, as I said, uh, the scripture that talks about you shall reap where you sow. He gave me that word, but the scripture he gave me was Ecclesiastes 2.26. And this is the Living Bible Version. So I decided that there was nothing better for a man to do than to enjoy his food and drink and his job. Then I realized that even this pleasure is from the hand of God. For who can eat or enjoy apart from him? For God gives those, now this is where I want you to catch it, for God gives those who please him wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away from him and gives it to him who pleases him. Let's stop right now and say, Lord, forgive me for times that I have rebelled against you and where and when I have not pleased you. Lord, I rededicate my life to you, my heart, my mind. In all that I do, I submit it unto your righteousness, O oh God, that you would be pleased with me. Now, Father God, I thank you for the wealth that has been laid up for the wicked, being transferred to the righteous. Father God, I thank you for the breakthrough in this hour. God, I thank you for wise stewardship and management and oversight with these, Father God, resources that you're entrusting me with. I thank you, Father God, for restoration. I thank you for great favor. Now, that's the other thing God is doing in this 2000, this 2020 year. He said great restoration and great favor. Great restoration and great favor. Now, I'm continuing with the word of the Lord for 2020. He said this is a time of great access and establishment for my people. And I heard the word of the Lord out of Acts 16, 26. I heard all the doors are open. The doors are open represents the revealing of good and evil. That means some uncovering. Access into heavenly portals. Revelation and mysteries of kingdom treasuries. Doors open speaks to our hearts, our ears, our mouths, opportunities. And as I said, great access for great favor and great restoration. Such a year before the new year came, I, I shared with you on the broadcast that I was going to talk about one thing, but as I began to pray that night before for preparation, and uh, the Lord dropped in my spirit. He wanted me to talk about favor. So I began to talk about favor in that show. And as you recall, I said then the Lord is releasing favor. And I release favor upon God's life, but upon God's people, upon our lives. We have to know that this is the hour of favor. And it, it, I don't know if I'll do it the next broadcast, but perhaps... If the Lord says the same, I will do it because I want to talk about favor and what promotes favor. People just think you can just declare favor and it's going to happen. But favor doesn't come when we dishonor or when we rebel against God or God's people or we mistreat or we sabotage. So or mal mis malign and, and um, uh, misunderstand that which someone has done done to be a blessing to us great favor there will be so much favor for those that trust the leading of my spirit in this new era i tell you my people this is an hour for the mature to decree many things in righteousness and watch me establish them before your very eyes so he says so pro proceed with caution for your word shall be a catalyst and fire starters 
burning in the direction of your words. The Lord gave me even last Sunday and during a time of worship, when it was time to release the prophetic word, he said to let the people know. And I believe I came out of Psalms 43 and one where it says, put a watch over my mouth and a guard over my lip, the door of my lips. This is an hour where you need to be very mindful of what you are saying and what you are talking about. And because we're building an altar of righteousness, we're going to decree a thing. We shall see the establishment of the things we have said, things we have prayed, the things we have interceded about. I saw in the realm of the spirit, as soon as we said something, it was like a quick, it was like a quick grasp of the manifestation of that word. So it's time to put away justing. It's time to put away complaining and murmuring. The Bible says, I believe it is in, in Exodus, Exodus, where the Lord told the, the children of Israel, Israelite, they were wandering and wandering. And they were murmuring and complaining. And he says that your, your complaints have come up as uh, uh, um, in my nostrils. And he talked about hearing the complaints. And he says the things that you have spoken shall be done unto you. So I'm saying to you, and he says specifically intercessors and prophets. This is the time, intercessors and prophets, that we rend our hearts, all God's people. But we rend our hearts. We purify our hearts. We let the spirit of truth purge our hearts. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's a time for us to mature in the things of God. Be healed. Father, I accept your healing. Even as you said you have sent, Father God, your word to heal us and to deliver us from all of our destruction. I thank you, Father, that you've sent your word. Heal your people. Heal your intercessors. Heal your prophets. Heal your apostles. Heal your pastors. Heal your evangelists. Heal your teachers. Heal your servants everywhere. Heal your people, oh God, from hurt, shame of the past, rebellion. Deliver us, oh God, from the stench and the reproach of our iniquities and the iniquities our forefathers opened doors for that we, Father God, suffered and have not been fully recovered from. Heal us and deliver us. The other thing the Lord said is that generosity. He says, I'm going to be so generous. Tell them I'm going to be very, very generous to those that have been generous and to those that have been generous, I will be even unto three generations. The Lord says, I'm going to be generous. Even unto three generations. If you've been generous. And let me talk about generosity for a moment. Generosity is not you sold and then you told. Okay, that's not generosity. A lot of people set sold into someone's life or into a ministry and then advertise. Oh, you know, I sold a hundred dollars. Oh, I sold a thousand dollars. Oh, I sold ten thousand dollars. Oh, I sold fifty thousand dollars. Oh, I sold fifty dollars. And oftentimes people do it just so they have bragging rights, not out of the pure motive of Lord. I'm so thankful that I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm so thankful, Lord God, that I get to give back to your kingdom and your work and your people. I get to sow into your servant. I get to sow into your ministry. I get to sow into a nation. I get to sow into a business. Oh my God. Woo! And you do it with liberality and you do it with generosity and you just give and you 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 give. And sometimes it's not even a lot for some of you. I've had seasons of droughts. Oh my God. Oh my God. Seasons of drought where I was given out of my need. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, I don't even want to weep. Thinking about how I gave and have given and give out of my need. Not for bragging rights, not to be recognized by man, but for the King of glory 
to see my heart and to see that I have been trusted. I've been faithful over a few. Now, God, now you can make me ruler over the millions because I've been faithful over the little, the hundreds, the thousands. So you can make me and entrust me with the hundreds of thousands and the millions because I've been faithful. Not before man. Man will see your good works and glorify God. But before the living God who nothing is hidden from him. So God says he's going to be generous to those that have been generous. He says, I'm raising up prophets in every industry, in every sphere. You're going to see prophets on the scene. I, I talked about that all in 2019. But God wants us to be reminded that his glory shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And we will be glory carriers. He's endowing his people with new glory, sending the prophets out here, there, and everywhere with the fresh word of the Lord, fresh anointing. Some are coming from behind the scenes that you know not of in every sphere and industry. New prophets on the scene, word of the Lord, who will not be intimidated by you, your face, your grim looks, your conversation, because they have been sorely tested and sorely prepared for the greater. The other thing the Lord talked about, he said, restoration of credit and land. He says, I will make your name good again. For some, I will give strategy to restore credit, and others, I will do it supernaturally. I have given many of my people the resources, yet the people still live on the land and in the land of the Philistines. They stand on the outside looking in when I have given many the resources to possess and occupy their own allotment of land. And one of the things that he talked to me about in this was, is that I've given, he's given resources, he's given connection, he's given consultation, but most people are comfortable being comfortable. They're comfortable in renting and building the wealth of the Philistines, even in, even churches who have been, uh, instructed to purchase even leaders who have been stuck instructed to purchase but yet they stand on the outside looking in renters who can afford to purchase but they stand on the outside looking in giving their wealth away every month to the philistine uh, it's up to you if you decide you want to believe god to possess the greater it's a time of great and grand restoration. I will restore unto you that which the locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm. I will restore your good names, your good fortune, health, marriages, covenants, covenant relationships, honor, stature, possessions, including land. And all the doors were open. You shall see doors that kept the captives of prisoners. You shall suddenly see it open and the prisoners set free those that have been locked up in natural prisons that in natural institutions shall be exonerated falsely accused you shall see this in this hour you shall see my hand of deliverance my arm is not too short to save says the spirit of the lord you're going to begin to see great numbers of those that shall be exonerated that were falsely accused number record numbers of those coming out of natural prison you shall also see the prison doors of those that have been shut up and locked away in sex trafficking god says i'm taking off the head and i'm going for the jugular of those that have spearheaded and have been involved in sex trafficking he said he's releasing those He's expend, extending grace and spirit of wisdom to choose life and focus on eating better. So for those of us who know that our challenge has been eating the wrong things, God says, I'm giving you the grace and wisdom to choose life and eat that which promotes life. He talked about setting the captives free. Those that have been locked in prisons of opioids, heroin, Crack cocaine, tobacco, alcohol, 
He's setting them free. Supernatural deliverance are coming to many. Supernatural deliverance to your loved ones. Supernatural deliverance. The spirit of the living God releasing the angels of deliverance to bring deliverance to your household, deliverance to your family, deliverance. So know that you are to cry out and thank the Lord in advance for setting the captives free from heroin, opioids, tobacco, alcohol, food addiction, even sex addiction, crack cocaine. Let my people know, daughter, that in this hour, I'm releasing a new grace, he says, to abstain from sexual perversion and live in, in sexual impurity. For all those that want it and will cry out to me to be delivered, from sexual impurity and perversion, I will deliver them from adultery, fornication, gay, lesbian, masturbation, I will, and pornography. I will deliver those that have been raped and molested. I will deliver those that have committed incest and the victims that are the result of incest. For I'm extending my hand of mercy. No longer will I wink at my church who think I am a God that does not see. No longer will I wink at my church who thinks I am a God that does, does not see. Know that 2020, perfect vision. I want you to know. That my eyes go to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. Beholding the good and the evil. For judgment will begin in my house first. All the doors are opening. For I am holding my ecclesia to a higher standard, breaking off the fear of man. That was another one he gave me. That which ensnares the captives, that they may be free to fulfill the fullness of purpose and destiny. And I come back to this again. There will be a major shakeup in the sex trafficking criminal enterprise. As we step over into this new decade, God said, we will see a major uncovering of sex trafficking ring. I saw, I actually saw five men. I saw two Mexicans, two African-Americans, and one Caucasian. They were minions, of course, in, in those that have been arrested. And he said there's going to be an infight uh, that's going to come, and that's going to bring a lot of exposure. Someone, one of the gangs or one of the groups have a sister that belongs to the other group, that is the sister of the other group. And that's a whole nother detail that I, I don't have the fullness to release yet. Fullness, permission, or revelation. For in this new decade of the open doors, your vision to see me lifted up high and my glory filling the earth will be restored in 2020. So I say to my ecclesia, watch. I give you 2020 vision to see what I have said and what I am saying. You will be among those that will say, and it came to pass, and it came to pass, just as the Lord said. Now, I released a portion of this word in my house of worship, Living Bread Ministries International, under the uh, uh, leadership of Apostle Kenneth D. Hogan and Prophetess Joyce M. Hogan on watch night service. I realized I, I, I had the grace, I had the latitude based on my leadership to release the whole word. But I realized a couple of things. I realized a couple of days after I had not realized I had not released all of the word and I didn't realize I hadn't released all of the word. I felt when I sat down that I had missed something. But as I was writing um, the very next day, which was New Year's Day, I was actually working, showing my client a property, wanted to make an offer, wanted to go back and look at the property again. So we did that. Um, and, uh, I realized the Lord was just ministering to me about some other things. And I realized all the words that I had not released. So this is the full 
release of what the Lord gave me prior to releasing the word um, watch night service at Living Bread Ministry. Um, and so uh, I'm grateful for the privilege to release it unto you. And um, I would love it if you would pray over it and be in prayer with me that God's perfect will will be done. And now at this time, I want to talk about our featured properties. I have three featured properties. You've seen them before. I have a dental clinic and I have a church and I have a condominium. So now the dental clinic located in Detroit Let's see if I see, let's one minute here. So the dental clinic located in Detroit, 14755 Finkel, fully loaded. It has the dental equipment in it. Um, all of the, uh, um, it's totally functional and operational. Actually, the dentist who's been there for 30 years in the community is still there working and would love to pass the baton. So if you know dentists in your family, someone's in school or someone's looking to go into their own dental practice, please give me a call. Or you might decide you want to purchase a building and, you know, use it for another reason. So that's at 14755 Finkel in Detroit. Priced at only seventy nine thousand. Oh my goodness, who can believe it, right? Secondly, I have a multi use building, currently used as a church and a counseling center. It can be used as a a regional strategy meeting center. You decide what you want to use it for. It has an adjoining building that needs to be built out, but currently there's twelve hundred square feet of usable space, a total of 2,000 square feet. Price to sell in the roaring and upcoming city of yours truly powerful Detroit comeback city. And then finally, I have another listing in Detroit. It's a condo, 283 East Ferry, located in the heart of it all. That's right, right across the street from Little Caesars Arena. Almost 4,000 square feet of living space, three bedrooms, three and a half baths, two car garage. Absolutely beautiful. You want to give me a call. If you're looking, and, and finally, if you have a property that you want to sell, you want me to put on the market, I would love to come and give you a consultation give you some recommendations if you need to spruce it up to, you know, maximize the profit on what you get. This is a perfect time to sell that property if that's what you want to do and it's a prop perfect time to shift to the greater. So you may want to sell one property and buy another. I'm happy to help you with that. And then finally, there might be some who um, you're looking to sell a property you really don't want to fix it up. You just want out. It's uh, Listen, I'm ready to go. You're ready to uh, cash out, relocate out of state, out of the country, and you don't feel like fixing it up. You know that it needs some work. Call me. I would love to come over and look at it and uh, connect you with the person that will pay the top dollar for you and let you be on your way. All right, so I want to be your real estate solutionist. I'm here to bring solutions. And so keep me in mind. Make the referral. Beverly Jordan, Carter and Associates Realty, your realtor of choice. All right. Thank you so much. Until next time. You are listening to Worship Radio International, the world's number one online Christian radio station. 
check out our website at www.worshipradio.faith. Or follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Worship Radio INT. This is the future.